Okay, this is part two of obesity causes, the causes of obesity and how you can avoid them. Um, right here is an article on ultra processed food. So when there's multiple ingredients, that's ultra processed food. There's actually part of a ca uh, classification, unprocessed food, mildly processed food, like just a little bit of salt added to it or a spice and ultra processed, you know, the kind of stuff you buy in a package where there's a big list of ingredients on it. Um, okay, here's a summary of the classifications. By the way, the more processed food a person eats, the fatter they get. Now, Lost in Space was a TV show I watched when I was a little kid. And uh, Will Robinson was sort of the boy adventurer, Lost in Space. And he had a robot that was his friend that would talk and would say, warning, warning, danger, Will Robinson. And the point is, there's so many toxic chemicals in these processed foods, you don't ever want to eat these things. The more you learn about them, the more you will just like run in the opposite direction. Okay, here's a paper from the United Kingdom, and they showed that for every 10% increase in ultra-processed foods, there was an 18% increase in the risk of obesity. Um, we also briefly alluded to vegans are the only ones. Now, this was done with the Seventh-day Adventists, but basically, the vegans were the only ones who had a normal body mass index, meaning less than 25, and the vegans here had a, uh, had a body mass index of 23.6, but the Seventh-day Adventists are vegans based on their religion. They're not... A lot of them are not health vegans. So what I'm saying is for true health vegans that aren't eating high-fat vegan food, their BMI would be even lower. Then when you start going to the lacto-ovo vegetarians, BMI is going up, pesco vegetarians goes up, and then semi-vegetarians, non-vegetarians, etc. just goes up, up, up. Plus, the more obesity, the more hypertension, the more diabetes, uh, the more all health problems, all right? You know, all of America's kind of like in this phase of modern cultural brainwashing and stupidity where they're like, well, I don't want to be an extremist. I don't want to be, you know, an absolutist about this. No, you know, there's a Ten Commandments uh, in the Old Testament for good reason. There's some things you should not do. And once you understand nutrition, if you want to be healthy, you want to avoid meat. You want to avoid oil. I realize there might be special circumstances, you know, you're out at your mother-in-law's house and they made some food for you and there's nothing else to eat. So maybe you got to eat a little bit or you're at a business lunch and you, you're offered something by your client and maybe you got to eat a little bit. But for the vast majority of the time, you're probably eating at home or you're making your own lunch and you should uh, do everything as healthy as you can if you want to optimize your health. So anyways, classic comparison from epidemiology is the northern Mexico, Tarahumara. They live in the Sierra Madre Mountains by Copper Canyon. In comparison with the Pima, the Pima Indians live in Arizona. They were separate. These two populations used to be together, but they were separated after the Mexican-American War, 1848. Pima were absorbed into Arizona. And they now eat the standard American diet, and they have tremendous obesity. Here's a picture of the Pima from around, you know, like around 1900 or something, back when they used to be skinny. And look how fit they are. This guy looks like, you know, a Division I college wrestler, okay? These guys look fit, and that's how the Pima used to be. And that's how the Tatahumata still are today. And what basically happens is when you live the old-fashioned way, guys got tons of energy. These Tatahumata, they can routinely run 100 miles. They have a holiday once a year where they all run at least 100 miles in one day. And it's like every guy in town is not like just a fast guy. Whereas the Pima, they're typical, like typical Americans, they're all fat and they got all diseases of affluence or Western society diseases. Cabbage, coronary artery bypass, grass, open heart surgery for coronary artery atherosclerosis, gallbladder surgery for gallstones, all the stuff from eating a high fat diet, low in fiber. Appendicitis, constipated, they form a dried out stool, stool ball, rock, occludes the appendix, back pressure from the mucous glands, distal to that, and the appendix pops, that's appendicitis. Straining at the stool from constipation due to lack of dietary fiber because there's no fiber in meat, very little in processed food. You get these little popped out outpouchings in your sigmoid colon, and one of those can pop, give you diverticulitis, terrible diabetes, and up a lot of patients with uh, BKA, baloney amputation. I see this stuff every day, all day long, every day. Okay, these are common things. Okay, Tata Humada, what's their diet? They eat lots of corn. That's sort of the, you know, they used to call the Mexicans the people of the corn. They eat tons of corn. You know, locally grown, of course, organic beans, squash. Rarely they'll eat some meat. They don't have any, they have zero obesity in their population, zero coronary artery disease. Their average total cholesterol is about 136. Okay, so that's what happens when humans eat the naturally occurring species species specific diet that they're designed for. 
Okay, there's just some papers about the Tyra Humada. Um, this guy, uh, Connor, was uh, friends with T. Colin Campbell, and he went out there and he, he studied their diets in great detail, did blood plus blood tests on all of them. On his actually measure of total cholesterol, the average was 125. Um, he said their main calorie sources were corn and beans. Um, and then as a fun experiment, he decided what will happen if we feed them a typical westernized high-fat diet. And they did that for five weeks, and their ADL, I'm sorry, their LDL cholesterol zoomed up 39%. <laughs> so it didn't take long to push them towards becoming like all the other fat and sick people. Okay, uh, Tata Humata, by the way, means fleet of foot. They're famous for being ultra marathoners. No hypertension, just a little more detail here on their, their uh, diet. Um, here's going to be a little more detail on their diet. Um, and when they were fed all they could eat, they fed them a whole bunch of like typical westernized things, egg yolks, egg whites, sugar. Okay, uh, so here the next slide is going to be better than this. So here it is. So the point was, it took about two weeks. They, they initially sort of had held steady the first week, and then up, up, up. And by two weeks, they really so it really took about one week before it started rapidly going up. Their total cholesterol is in response to this high fat diet. I think it took some time to get fat to accumulate inside their skeletal muscle cells to cause more insulin resistance, for example. Uh, but then they just sort of maintain these hyperlipidemia type numbers. So it's rather interesting. And what that kind of means is you can get away with it for one day when you're at a business dinner, but don't make a habit of it. Okay, the Yanomamo, they're located in South America near at the junction of Brazil with Venezuela and the Amazon jungle. Same old story, they eat a primarily plant-based diet. They don't add any salt to their diet. They have zero hypertension, okay? Same blood pressure in their teen is when they're elderly. Um, so, you know, sodium is a major contributor to hypertension and also is high-fat food. And the reason I make such a big deal about hypertension and diabetes is that's what kills everybody. All these demented patients, like 95% of them, they got diabetes and hypertension. I see this all day, every day, these are common things. And the other thing I say is all these Americans are all worried about the wrong thing. Oh, I gotta get my good fats, I need to get my protein, I don't wanna be calcium deficient or I'll get osteoporosis. That's all BS. Dr. McDougall said it and I agree with him. I've never seen a single patient ever, not one, who had a fat deficiency. I've never seen a single patient ever, not one, who had a calcium deficiency. I never once seen a single patient that was protein deficient. Never, these things don't occur. Okay, they're like in your imagination because you've been paying too much attention to TV and all these phony paleo carnivore low carb BS artists on the internet. Okay, all that stuff is nonsense. Think about it. If you were to become low fat vegans, you would be healthy most likely. If you were healthy, no one could make money off you. You need to be fat and sick in order to get you hooked on pills and get you going for surgeries, buying wheelchairs and canes and all this stuff. That's what happens to fat, sick people that are hypertensive, diabetics, that don't ever turn it around and go vegan, okay? So this is worth billions of dollars. These big food companies, they make billions, billions of dollars every year. So they got money to pay all these like good-looking 40-somethings to sit there on the internet and tell you all this nonsense lies about high-fat diets. There's no such thing as a, as a good high-fat diet. Um, and there's no such thing as a fat deficient naturally occurring diet. Okay, we'll get into more of that later, but what I'm doing is here, I'm kind of going around the world in, you know, 10 minutes to show you these populations that eat plant-based diets. And I agree, none of them are 100% plant-based, but they're very largely plant-based. These are quite often 95% plant-based in these in that ballpark. Okay, so the Kenyans eating their fruit-based diets, vegetables and starches, they all had normal blood pressure. Um, again, same when they're elderly as when they were young. And they're super famous for having the best runners in the distance uh, races, like Kip, Kipchoge, for example. They'll eat a lot of cornmeal. I have a paper, too, where it's a 1929 Lancet paper. I think I might have it next slide. Let's see here. Yeah, here it is. Okay, by Donison. So 1929 in Lancet Journal. And basically, there was 1,800 inpatients admitted to a hospital. They checked the blood pressure on all of them. Zero with hypertension. So I say that because like in my residency, we're taught, oh, African-Americans, they have so much hypertension. It's so sad. It often, causes high, it often causes kidney failure. Tons of them are on dialysis. It often causes them to have a stroke. Oh, it's so sad. Heart failure, congestive heart failure. Guess what? It's because it, they go, oh, it's probably genetic, salt sensitivity. It's all BS, okay? 1,800 uh, Kenyans 
admitted to a hospital and there was zero hypertension when they were eating a plant-based diet, okay? So, you know, it's about as good as it gets in medicine for numbers. Okay, and that's the end of uh, part two.